to have passion in life is everything. What's your Everest? Oh, is it yeah. that 200-inch buck? They just look so impressive when they're wide. Especially running away. <laughs> Welcome to this week's episode of Eastman's Elevated. It's like a think tank for outdoor activity. It sounds exactly like my hunting. Just always thinking about it, always trying to evolve it and make it better. Here's your host, Brian Barney. Hey, what's happening, guys? Got a brand new Eastman's Elevated for you. So today on the podcast, I have on Glenn Eberly from Eberly Stock and Ike Eastman. I always really enjoy getting together with Glenn. He's one of the, the most interesting guys I know, and he's just lived this amazing life. And uh, I never quite know where the conversation's going to go, but it's always interesting. And so that's what it is today. I mean, he talks about um, his dad passing and, um, you know, he talks about some tough things in life and really the conversation centers about enjoying life and being present in the moment. And so, uh, just made for a, a, a really good podcast and conversation. I really enjoyed it. And I think you guys are going to enjoy it too. I want to thank the sponsor for today's podcast, Everly Stock. Uh, so Glenn started this company years ago and he, he just builds great packs that, that pack the weight well, uh, they're super durable. Uh, they now have a clothing line as well. Make sure to check that out. But um, I really enjoy using their packs. So uh, this past year, they came out with the Vapor Series. The Vapor Series goes on the mainframe. You can have a 2,500, 5,000, or 7,500 cubic inch pack. And I've been using this for my expedition uh, trips, like uh, the this latest trip that I did that live podcast on Colorado that I released last week. Just works really good, um, and, and it also has a, a meat shelf to be able to pack meat out or fit that meat on, uh, and still have all your stuff inside that bag. So it's just a great design. Uh, I also really like that kite pack. I use it for day hunting. In fact, I'm going to be using it for the next week uh, as I'm going to be hunting elk. And I really like it. It's lightweight, packs the weight good, and when you do harvest something, um, you know you can put it on that pack and get it out. And it just seems to. Uh, be a great day pack that sits really tight to your back, packs the weight really well, uh, and, and hunts really well. So I like that pack. Uh, I also uh, like the the little big top for smaller expeditions, and um, I, I also use that uh, destroyer for uh, longer trips. And I like it as it really keeps the weight close to your back and stacks it high like it should be. But uh, they just make great packs. They're a great company. I really appreciate the support from them, and um, I really enjoyed the conversation with Glenn. So uh, I also want to thank Eastman's for their support of the podcast. Uh, make sure to check out everything we have going on over there. I uh, run that other podcast, Eastman's Flycast. You can check that out. Um, we do um, the Beyond the Grid, which is our internet TV show, which comes out on YouTube. And uh, we release a new episode every week. Uh, we've got some some older episodes of mine that are being released that played on the Outdoor Channel that now um, we're able to release onto the, the the YouTube, onto the internet there. So you can check those out, and uh, we'll have some new ones dropping here soon. Also check us out uh, on the Outdoor Channel, Eastman's Hunting TV, um, Tag Hub, which is our internet research tool, and then also the magazines, uh, Eastman's Hunting Journal, Eastman's Bow Hunting Journal, uh, you can use that promo code ELEVATED321. That'll get you both magazines and an outdoor edge knife for $50. Um, well, let's get into this podcast. Uh, it's a great one. So uh, Glenn Eberly from Eberly Stock, uh, Ike Eastman, uh, president of Eastman's. And um, I'm your host, Brian Barney, Eastman's Elevated. Here we go. Okay, we're live here. We're live at TAC. I've got Ike Eastman, and I've got one of our favorite partners from Everly Stock. I've got Glenn Everly. So uh, welcome again to the podcast. Really grateful to have a chance to sit down with you. It was a surprise. And Ike I, actually didn't tell me I was doing this. But, I know. Um, I stuck this like, in there. That was Brian Barney. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> this is for a podcast. Oh, dear. <laughs> I figure if nothing else, I'll sit here for 30 minutes and talk about airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. No, but, but I always enjoy seeing you guys. Yeah. And as it, simple as that, you know, the, the nice thing is at some point our relationship goes back far enough that we can sit and have a conversation mm -hmm. update each other and yeah. if it happens that i'm wearing this stupid apparatus and i guess that's the way it goes yeah but good to see you guys <laughs> yeah, yeah it's really good to see you, to sit down with you. you've yeah. had a crazy year i've had a yeah i've had quite a year I mean, I mean a lot of changes in my personal life yeah all over the place and uh that and and then i guess all of which though is just a reminder that life's in motion and uh no it's not it's not a well it's both 
appreciating the moment you're in and then realizing also that all of this is transitory and we shouldn't you know adapt and bond, and bond too much to it so yeah, yeah the only cool. constant is that it's always changing right yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah, sure yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah i was thinking earlier about uh just i don't know why it flashed in my mind but my favorite movie when i when i was a young man was a movie called buckaroo bonsai you guys ever watch that no i haven't it's, it's a, like a cult film and and, and the one of the reasons i like it is because i was like 20 something in college and i thought i could do, you know do anything and um, and this fellow Buckaroo Banzai was, uh, uh, you know, rock star, scientist, and race car driver, and and and, fi- and, and crime fighter, and he's fighting the creatures from the eighth dimension, and because he discovers <laughs> them when he's driving his car through a mountain. It's a it's a great movie. You should watch it. So anyway, in, in one of the uh, in one of the rock stars, you know, he's he's like the women are all fawning over him, and and he, and he looks out in the audience, and he goes to this girl, he goes, just remember, Betty, no matter where you go, there you are. And I've always thought that was the most pr- <laughs> profound thing ever said. You know, I mean, really, I think about it. I was like, yeah, actually, it's it's a reminder to live in the moment. And uh, that should be on the out there to the T-shirt. I, Wherever you are, there you are. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no matter where you go. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's there right. You no matter are. where you, you go, you get the language just right. Yep, there you are. And I, I, but, but but the truth is, though, uh, you know, when you say you know had a lot going on, that if if you remember that, you know, to live in the moment, that's a, that's a good thing. But I think the other part of that that I that I've captured is that there's always a road in front of you. You know, you, you know, when, when thinking about where we are and why we are sitting down and having this conversation, you, know, you kind of go, well, you know, the, the truth is it's good to know both the moment, but also that there's, there's a project and a bunch of things are in front of us that we're working on. So, yeah, yeah. That's it's, awesome. it's so important to keep present, isn't it? All the way throughout life, you know, yeah. you start worrying about problems that you got going on or the future uh, problems that you've had in the past. It, it really is living in the present. That is so important. Like you say that, but we all need to do a better job of it yeah. and enjoying what's right around us. Like, uh, I know if I'm stressed out, I can be with my family and I can almost be somewhere else. You might I'm as not, well. Yeah. I'm not engaged with them. I'm yep. not having fun. I'm not smiling. I'm in my own head. Like, yep worried about it and the same thing for a hunt I can be on a hunt and if I have problems going on in my life I'm not there I'm not present and and I'm not enjoying what I what I what I've structured my whole life around what I've waited for all year long I'm not enjoying that time that I'm out so it's so important what you're saying and and it's easy to say but the truth is none of us are perfect at it it's always hard to to draw yourself back in and yeah Yeah. I I struggle with with worrying about things I can't control yes I, that's my one of my weaknesses drives me nuts and that's my great strength as i've learned that i actually can't control much and so i just go okay <laughs> that's why i like you Glenn. i look up to you on that. I really, honestly i do <laughs> yeah another one of those you know po- points of wisdom i somewhere along the way I, I was a fighter pilot in one of my chapters of life and um and i was pretty good because i didn't worry about stuff actually and, and we saw an yeah. f1 for sale today f, f uh, what an f1 was for sale today for almost three million i thought oh cool and if f1 doesn't make sense so it has to be an f something else f4 I thought it was an f1 like an i'll f- have to look yeah maybe I mean, it's an f4 yeah. it looked like the f4 the problem with it buying an f4 though is you couldn't afford gas for it you know, you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but anyway yeah, you've got a new plane you've been playing with that beaver we were just talking yeah. about that man that looks like an awesome plane uh, those were uh uh yours is from the 50s but uh, right. what a reliable plane that's got to be so fun to fly oh boy it's it's really reawakened you know one of those things again in the multiple chapters of glenn Eberly's, Eberly's life uh, along the way i was a pilot and uh but got busy building Everly stock and didn't fly for much for about 10 years. And then when I did, I was flying an old biplane, which is fun, but really impractical. Um, right. Ike and I went up in it last it summer. and awesome. Yeah. One of the best a, things I've ever done. Yeah. Is it really? Yes. Yeah, it's super oh, fun. Wow. But is again, it open? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, when you sit in there. It's, like, I, you know, Ike doesn't have a lot of hair left, but boy, <laughs> really, it really. You really notice it. 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 <laughs> the hair. The, the one. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, we had fun. But the the thing about that is that, uh, you know, for, for the things that really we can do in Idaho, flying upside down and doing loops and stuff is fun, but it's not that practical. Mm-hmm. And the truth is um, I'd been kind of removed from the professional, you know, aspects of flying um, and decided in w- w- one of the things that happened in this last year is my dad died and he had a ranch in the back country of Idaho in, in, in holding. So it's basically a, a big piece of private property in the middle of the national forest one of the that's, coolest places on the planet yeah all by itself yep. an amazing remote place and uh and i want to go there you know I, I i told dad when he was alive that i was going to keep it and that happened sooner than i thought it would but decided that i would keep the ranch and in the course of that i was kind of in preparing for it i was looking for an airplane and 
um, a buddy of mine who I realized was much smarter about airplanes than I am. <laughs> yes, uh, yes helped, he is. Helped, uh, <laughs> helped find crazy. Him. Yeah, he's just a good, solid dude and really wired to, you know, you know look for the things that matter and – uh, Ask the that, right questions. That, yeah. That's what I yeah. appreciate about him. Yeah, he's a, so just Todd Hitchcock. Yep. He goes by Hitch. And just a great friend. That We go way back all the way to high school. But anyway, Hitch found this. Uh, he was, we were looking for a Cessna 185, which, you know, Idaho's like Alaska, really. There's a, it's a, it, it's a backcountry culture. There's a lot of flying to get you places that are remote in Idaho. And Idaho has the most rem- remote areas of any state in the lower 48 in terms of the, you know, the big roadless areas with a lot of airfields out there, and uh, one of which is on the, our ranch. And so uh, I was looking for a, what everybody else in Idaho has is 185, and Hitch said something about, oh, you should, get, you should look at a beaver. And I was like, what? 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 I, I knew what they were. I hadn't really ever thought about one and didn't know why I'd look. Um, and it happened, though, that, that he saw this crazy yellow one for sale not far from us, and we met and saw this thing one day. And then I was like, gosh, that's quite a plane. You'll walk up to it. It's extraordinary. It's big. And yeah. And and when I was roaring up, you know, I was like, gosh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> and then <laughs> we got in it, though, and the cockpit's sort of his old, you know, um, Art Deco stuff in it, and it's just kind of a neat, you know, stylistic thing, but with this great big radial engine on the front that beavers have, the classic ones. And uh, um, and then when, when we, you realize it's a pretty big airplane, it has eight seats, it can seat eight people. You can two, carry a bunch of weight, right? 2,000 pound payload, oh, which for so a small plane. If you can fit is, it in there, it can carry yeah. a lot of much. And I've, you know, so we were going to the ranch with, uh, a shit ton. Can I say shit? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shit ton yeah. of cri- uh, of Krispy Kreme donuts. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> my uh, Casey and and uh, Kevin Monroe, our friend, uh, who's likely to be in our guiding business that we're working on building, um, uh, found out that bears like Krispy Kremes, and so uh, <laughs> You're a, all if you can mash, you can actually mash Krispy Kremes into quite a compact, you know, heavy to carry load, and so we had. The beaver has 2,000 pounds of payload, and you, you know, I don't know if we had 2,000 pounds of Krispy Kremes in it. We had a lot. I mean, the thing was bulked out and weighted out both, and because it took us halfway north to the ranch to climb to altitude. It, oh my we were, gosh! Like, oh, this, you know, and that's a p- powerful airplane. It climbs yeah, good, it but but I was just kind of going easy on it, trying to keep the speed up so it didn't take forever. Yeah. And uh, and but I realized about, when we're about halfway there, I'm like, gosh, we're still, you know, not to 8,500 feet, and you know, should be. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so so Monroe somewhere in the course of that he goes, hey, uh, how close to the maximum payload of this thing? you think we are and I, and I go well we're, we're well over and I rarely have that moment of like the perfect timing but that did it was, I was on and so, well over yeah. and he what kind of like mean? had the shock look and then he's kind of and I start laughing and, 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 and I go well you know what, by, by close do you mean like above or below and but but you, anyway the point is though that you can fill it up and and it can carry it but it's uh, but but it also you know, you can get yourself in trouble with them. So I've, but the, back to the whole story, it's just been really great for me to reconnect with, with aviation, with that thing and, uh, and to find, you know, myself in it again. And, and I love it. And I'm having so much fun and, and we're re- making practical use of it. I mean, yeah. you know, we, That's I mean, cool we got thing. it. We got a ton of Krispy Kreme donuts in the middle of nowhere. Like you can't believe <laughs> mm-hmm. so, those bears are fat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we actually had a, a picture of one of the bears we got on, 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 on film. Um, it was, it was funny. This, uh, they come back from the bait and they downloaded the camera and, and this bear's lying on its back with its paws like this and you can just tell like, we're just laughing about this bear in heaven he's like he just, this, just does not know what's just happened <laughs> he's, he's, got, he's went into, like, he's went into yeah. a diabetic shock laying there yeah, I, like, oh, oh, man. I can't wait till I can get up again because I mean, that was awesome I'm going to do it again <laughs> anyway yeah, yeah. We have, we've had fun out there and the plane's been a good part of it I you're right it, though it, you live in Idaho in that back country it, you have to have an airplane if you have yeah. anything back there. Just yeah. I mean, it's well, don't they do a thing in Idaho where uh, guys fly from all over the country to and the, there's a oh well, there's a place that they go all the time. I can't remember where the airfield, and it's a it's a big huge backcountry event. And yeah. then they go from there and they try and hit every single backcountry uh, airport. There's some game they play. Like, yeah. oh, the uh, guys uh, that chartered us in there that one time were telling us about it. Oh, the Sawtooth Aviation. Yeah, yeah, right. Yep. Yeah, there's a, there's a cool backcountry flying culture there, and and legitimate, and also when you look at some places where people land land airplanes, it's like wow, that's that's kind of ballsy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but it's really opened up the state, you know, a different way in a good way for me personally, and and mm-hmm. and it's been rewarding both to you know make myself learn how to you know be smart with an airplane again. I was going to say, learn how to fly again. I, I know how to fly, but being smart with an airplane is different. So <laughs> now that I'm doing that again, that's good. And, uh, and, um, 
you know, we're, we're telling little stories with the plane for our brand um, that I think are going to be good. And um, it also just is, you know, there's sort of this holistic thing, that this project that we're doing that with Everly Stock that um, it makes sense. You know, we're, we mm-hmm. live in a great place. We're in Boise, Idaho. Fine. But north of there and south of there and all around us are places that are hard to access and uh, and hunting opportunities for all kinds of cool stuff that, you know, we can now engage in a different way. Because one of the things for me is personally is I have to be efficient. You know, I'm, yeah. I've been really busy for so long that being that efficiency matters. And yeah, getting in the car and driving six hours to go to the, to yeah. the ranch is not ideal. Right, or whatever it is. Yeah, so. Well, and just some of those remote locations for hunting elk, like uh, the goal is always to, to not see any boot tracks where you're hunting. And when you right. have an airplane and get to some of those remote places in Idaho, that's a reality. <laughs> right. and, and some of that... Uh, November mule deer hunting that you guys have. They're a rut mule deer hunting, we'll say, for that backcountry. And then some of the early elk hunting, it has to be really fun to start to think outside the box of where yeah. you can go and what you can do. Like, that's a real adventure to be able yeah. to yeah. fly into a, to a runway <laughs> somewhere and disappear where there's no humans around for 100 miles. You know, that's wild, Glenn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know. And, yeah. I, and I feel really lucky that, you know, that, that, that that's you know, that's the road we're looking at. And there's a lot of cool stuff in front of us. Yeah. Sure. That's super cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So what do you guys got? I know you guys came out with the vapor series, not to change the subject. Cause <clears throat> yeah. I love, I'll sit here and talk about airplanes. all day. <laughs> yeah. Right. But I'm sure the yeah. audience at some point is going to go, what, who is this? Okay. Why, why are we? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I didn't realize yeah, we were on the flying products. Product flying. No, but, but, uh, but explore exploration and adventure is what that's about. That's, yeah. that's important. That's, but that's, that that's a big part of, of our world and, and what matters. And expansion but, of knowledge. You yeah. were talking earlier about how you're <clears> teaching one of your sons how to fly and he's going to get his pilot license and this is yeah. you know a way that you guys are connecting on a level that's that's all really important oh for sure yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. i can't wait to but that's sad kids. you know once we get there and we you know dump our stuff out and we start walking up the mountain and that's different and yep you know that's where that's where the, the real Everly Stock project comes in. And you were just asking, you know, you mentioned the vapor, and I don't know if you were going to say what else have you got going on. Well, I was going to mention the vapor, and then you guys have the new Bino Bivy, which I have on my crutch, which uh, I love that thing. Good. It's the perfect size, and you guys re-engineered the, the uh, straps on that, so it's not, so, not as bulky and a little lighter weight for those early season bow hunts where it's not so hot right. or where it is hot, so the straps aren't as hot. Right. And, 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 uh, and you'll be happy to know if, if you like it, I'm great. I'm great great to hear but we're also re-engineering it again right now so <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to get but another I one next year the <laughs> <laughs> no but i guess the one point that i'm happy to make is that we're constantly in motion in that regard where you know i'm never satisfied i'm always looking at this stuff going gosh you know if somebody says you like they like it i'm like you do oh I'm, that's okay because yeah. <laughs> you're two <laughs> generations the next ahead one's of us. Be better <laughs> 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 but um uh, not to discourage you from buying whatever's there now but no but the, uh, we uh, we make good stuff you know I, I had a really good conversation with steve decker of the elk foundation this morning about um you know one of our keys to success being the fact that still with hundreds of thousands of packs in the marketplace um and and being used by the people that are hardest on them the special operations guys on the military side and the hunters on the hunting side um my Current warranty, warranty department is one guy. Um, I pay him five, typically about five hours every two weeks. So Jeez. he works two and a half hours a week, one guy. And, and you know, that's just, that's and been our standard for a long time. Is mm-hmm. we Not that things don't break and, and, and not that there aren't things that break that people just don't bother to send back. But on the whole, if, if a gear company of our scale has no, effectively no warranty department, right. that says an awful lot about, yeah, about the honesty of with which we approach our our project and that being if anything is ever unworthy or we discover that it could be done better we do it better right. we fix it and 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 so that's cool and then the next you know really cool thing i can tell you that as far as me personally um as far as it all goes is that uh you know for years i was the only designer at everly stock and the only right. guy really you know, I, I was everly stock right. i hate to say it but it's true um, you were the, and, <laughs> what yeah, they say the, 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 the cook and bottle washer yeah exactly and, <laughs> yeah, which is great and and i i've really enjoyed the project and i have no regrets about the way that we did it but um my focus was always on building a brand you know first and and then along the way you go well you know later we'll build a company meaning you know the infrastructure to grow right. and and take over market share and all that stuff that you do when you're a growing mm-hmm. company mm-hmm. Um, and that's really our project now i have a, a a cool you know team where i don't have to be on camera or on podcast i don't know how you got me you know, but <laughs> usually i, 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 I avoid you these into things this. <laughs> um, because i have really good talented people working for me that i want to be the face of our company mm-hmm. and that are that are that are really you know 
you know, good parts of the puzzle and a whole bunch of them that mm-hmm. enough, you know, that I can look at it now and go, yeah, you know, we're, we're in a really good place. And uh, happily for me, like I said, I've, I've designed, I've, I've hired a couple of good designers. Um, I have a good kind of apprentice designer in the bag and pack side that is young and creative and fresh. And he and he, he and I work well together, you know, with me just him drawing and me critiquing largely mm-hmm. or, or mm-hmm. you know, identifying that, you know, the thing that we need to do next and, and having somebody else, you know, doing the machinations to make it happen and, and manage the relationships that get it into production and all that. And, that. and that's been really good. But then the next part that I'm super excited about is um, I just hired, recently hired a, a new guy uh, named Troy, uh, who's an apparel designer. And, and not just an apparel designer, but really a soup to nuts, get it done apparel guy. And he's super talented. I'm mean, I nice. I, I'm so happy with this fellow and just love him already. Nice. Barely know him, and I love him. <laughs> but <laughs> um, no, but but he's been super productive, and you know I can show you the portfolio of things that we're working on, and you go, oh wow, you guys are serious about this, and I go, yep, mm-hmm. we are. Um, and so we have a lot of really cool stuff in the works, and, and and all of it takes time. You know, it will be some time before you see look at Everly stock and see the the fruit of that. Right. But there's some great stuff, you know. Well, you guys out. have some layers now. You know, we are just in your booth. We're at the Total Archery Challenge, and you have some layers and some clothing. But just to watch that grow is going to be a, a yeah. blast. It's pretty cool. And, yeah. Yeah, and we're fun. seeing the fruit of it now. Yep. I mean, that Vapor series, um, I, I'm not so egotistical that I know you designed it for me, but <laughs> you designed it for me. You know, <laughs> it is such a great pack. I mean, yeah. you talked about the durability, which your company is known for, uh, your warranty department always standing behind it the evolution of your products how you are never satisfied like you're constantly you're constantly thinking about it and improving all these things but that vapor series is unreal to have the three interchangeable bags to have it on the main frame yeah. carries the weight really well uh, uh to have a place to store meat in there is great and, and so now that's just my absolute go-to pack and you lighten the weight on it you yeah. got it down down light but you guys will never cut it to a point where it won't pack the weight good and you won't cut it to a point where it won't be durable and that's what i love is you've got it as light as it can be but it's still going to operate and it's still like i am tough on gear like i can still beat up on that thing and it's not going to break or bust on me so i am so impressed by the vapor series with those three bags i just absolutely love them and and your apparel line as well that that clothing and i know you're evolving it and you're ahead two generations uh but what great gear what great colors camo patterns Oh, cool. breathability like yeah. uh we're seeing the fruit of that now absolutely okay. and and your team uh you, you you've assembled this team of really passionate good individuals you know yeah. that that are going to carry on this this brand for the test of time so it's just amazing I, I think you're seeing the fruit yeah. of it now yeah cool outdoor I'm, hunters i mean they're the guys that are putting your prototypes to the to the test you know it's yeah. not it's not somebody in an ivory tower somewhere designing clothing it, right. or backpacks. It's right. being used and designed in Idaho and used, you know, yep. in your backcountry. Yeah. And, well, so first of all, I just want to say I'm, I'm grateful that you see all that. You said that, and I'm like, really? Brian Barnes saying that? That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, um, but, yeah, I, I, uh, I can look at it objectively and go, yep, I think actually I feel really good about where we are as a company where our products are currently and, and, and the, you know, the array that's before us, all the things that we're going to do. Um, and, and to what you said, you know, it's, I can make anything out of fabric, you know, out of whether I mean, literally, I mean, we, I don't, well, so I don't know how to make a space suit. There's some stuff in there that would work. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I can make one. That's right. But anyway, but as far as packs go, you know, I've had all the way, of course, everybody tells you how they think you should, they should, you should do what you know they want or mm-hmm. how they would do it and that, and you get used to that but um but one of the truths about my process is that it's organic you know there, we always start with what we know and and then we look at how it could be better and and we we're looking for new materials but the new materials have to be strong enough to withstand what Brian Barney is going to do to them mm-hmm. your yeah. time after time yep and uh and and so we don't just you know follow the trend we don't go oh you know people are making this with dynamo whatever that is no like, yeah we, we do that or or you know we don't make a carbon fiber frame pack well we could do that but you don't need to i mean i, I mean we have packs that can carry more weight than a human can carry mm-hmm. and they're as light as realistically you can have them be and put 200 pounds on them 
or you know more if you can carry that and i'm not yeah, afraid one and pack you put 700 pounds on it before just, it broke yeah. I saw, it's a and, youtube video yeah, yeah i saw you guys do that yeah, we, yeah. that was crazy yeah. that was absolutely crazy yeah. Yeah. yeah and we've done that a couple times just to show people oh you 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 say that your packs are better than ours well fine well here's what ours do i don't know what yours do but here's what ours do and yeah. the interesting thing about that is that we've never really reached the load limit of the pack itself i mean what bro- what breaks on a pack is that silly little plastic ladder lock buckle on the front mm-hmm. that holds the harness to the to the one inch strap that those break at 670 pounds um gross weight on the pack yeah so say, one of them will fail yeah yeah, it's, yeah. And, and that's what's cool to know but mm-hmm. i want to make one with metal buckles and find out what breaks next but we, there's really no need to the point is made that you know our structure is going to withstand whatever you put on it and uh and if we discover a f- weak point, we fix it. So yeah. right now, I can tell you that yeah, you put blood. What do you want on them? It's fine. Fill with rocks if you yeah. can create that. But um, and you've got um, different. You got there. So just one point on the the vapor, which is cool, is it's module modules. So you buy the mainframe, yeah. which you have two different versions. You have a short and a tall. A lot of people don't know you have a tall version. Yeah. I don't need it. Brian doesn't need it. But some of the guys in our office, because I apparently live with giants you know they're <laughs> six five and luke's six five and scott's six five and they they like that taller main right. that taller mainframe because they can extend the the um they can extend the, the harness, harness and then they get a little load lift if they want to do that if you're into that thing whatever I don't, <laughs> i've never had to have that but i don't have a very long torso <laughs> but yeah. the whole modularity and then you buy the vapor series and you can get two different bags for day hiding or you know your expedition three different bags yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. i only use the, the big one on the little one but um because i'm either in there for 10 days or i'm in there for 14 minutes <laughs> um, but yeah. you know it, it, it is really neat how that whole system works together and then you can do you know the bat wings on the side which that's the other thing i do and it's just awesome how it's not here's one pack that fits all oh for sure yeah and and again so we call that system the emod system the everly stock modular system mm-hmm. and the nice thing about that is it's highly evolved because it's actually existed for a long time i right. mean you know we started making stuff in 2005 that had that same interface. And wow. so basically every Everly stock product that's been made since 2005 is likely to work to integrate and, and, and cross-populate, mm-hmm. which is kind of neat. Yeah. Um, but but also that, you know, to the point of uh, the company getting bigger than me, thank God. Um, now we're actually, <laughs> you know, starting to tell people, oh, by the way, oh, that, you know, and that's been there for about 10 years, but this is what it is and how you use it, right. which is cool. But um, what I was saying earlier about, you know, kind of where we are is, you know, my focus has always been on the r- robustness of the product, the practical utility of it, the intuitiveness of it, you know, things that, that make it so you can just grab a bag with your eyes closed and go out and, and have a reasonably good experience with it. If you want to know a little bit more and make it better, there's always ways to do that. Um, if you have a bad experience, well, sometimes that happens, but oftentimes it's because people just didn't use it right. Yeah. Um, but anyways, we get past well, that stuff and we start looking at, well, okay, now I get it that, you know, a seven pound ba- or eight pound baseline pack you know, which would, which is a miracle of pack development mm-hmm. from what we were, where we were 10 years ago. Right. The things that we can do with yeah. this, you know, the, with those that we've done with those is blew everything else out of the water that ever came before it. Right. But that said, you know, why not do that with a four and a half or five pound pack? <laughs> yeah. And, and that extra two or three or five pounds matters a lot. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so um, the nice thing about what we have now and, and what we'll always have in the future is that um, you can kind of, you know, assemble the right set of components for your mission you yep. know for your particular purpose in any given given day um, you can build it what you need mm-hmm. and uh, and have the flexibility to expand it if you do what we say and go in line and come out heavy <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> so, all cool. yeah so yeah, you can, and you can you know you can use the same you use certain module portions of it for early season and certain portions for later season and you know and depending on if you're truck camping or if you're backpacking whatever you're doing um that you know you just buy those pieces and then modularity and put them in put them out take them in take them off yeah um, i love that part yeah I absolutely well, love it yeah yeah thanks it's great stuff yeah uh yeah i'm 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 excited about it so the clothing so uh you have and what pieces do you have now that you can that yeah, no, I, I can't count past three so don't ask me <laughs> 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 that's right no. you were telling us about three fuel tanks there's five <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. no, i told you there are five <laughs> three, three that matter but anyway uh, no uh yeah we have a pretty good you know i, I we started apparel years ago but not yeah. not with any you know you know only because we had a few novel items but the but the truth is that you know the real launch was 2017 ish um with a launch line that 
was was good. I mean, I'm I've seen a lot of people that have a lot more experience making apparel than I personally have that failed much more miserably than I right. did. I think our, our launch line is is still viable and good, and and you know it, it basically is you know pants to and, and a few different tops and you know a rain shell that's unique and you have a puffy too, right? Coming. We don't. Okay. We don't. We haven't made one yet. Well, we have. We have a, a, a thinsulate. I was gonna say. Uh, I thought filled, I saw one in yeah, your booth. Jacket, yeah, jacket. But uh, but the puffy. That, you know that you picture the compactable down puffy right. will be uh, next year. Nice. Um, and there's a ton of stuff like that coming. You know, we have as I mentioned earlier, Troy, um, the most productive man I've ever met. Really? <laughs> Possibly. I think he is. I actually asked him. <laughs> oh, I'm, like, I'm like, I'm like, dude. Do you always do this? Are you always this creative, or are you just trying to impress me? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Butts yeah. into you, like, that yeah. must just be him. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, it's it's going to be fun um, to be able to fish from you know from the waters of because uh, it's not just that uh, that he quickly understood our brand and is making designs that I'm proud of. Um, that's pretty remarkable. That's though, saying something. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, things absolutely. that I'm excited to, to, oh, I can't wait to make that. You know, mm-hmm. th- those things are coming. But the, the point is, so right now we have a pretty good, you know, top to bottom line in our own unique canvas. And Brian, you mentioned earlier that, you know, that we have good colors and mm-hmm. patterns. And I, I, am, I am proud of it. I, nothing is, you know, they're not made to be, you know, psychedelic and stand out in the sea lift <laughs> line. Those are kind of cool, but they're yeah. not really that so, purposeful for real field conditions. Yeah. I mean, I, we mm-hmm. try to make stuff that is actually going to fit into an environment right um and then the the prettiness of it is interesting up close and it you know if you study our patterns are good but that their purpose wasn't to you know to to give pop on a on a shelf or mm-hmm. to show up in a picture it's right. not a fashion statement no yeah right. they're they're for yeah. purpose right yeah and so i think we're on target and we'll play with different things in the future and of course and and uh, yet um what we have now is good. Uh, what, what's coming is going to make is going to kind of fulfill our mission. And the truth is, you know, if if you're to ask where we're headed or what our plan is, I mean, I I absolutely believe that Everly Stock will be the most meaningful brand in our marketplace in terms of our section of it. You know, not a gun brand, but but the the nylon apparel segment. If we don't own it, mm-hmm. shame on me, shame on us, because I because we should, mm-hmm. because again, we're not. There's not an umbrella company behind us that holds us back. There's right. not a there's a, there's there's not a lack of vision. There's not a lack of talent. Um, we have a lot of good things going for us, and an honesty and an integrity in the people and the mission that's mm-hmm. before us that I think is going to prevail. I, I I don't you know it, there may be other people that rise and, and compete against us. There should be. I mean, there's plenty of market space for lots of good people, and um, we, there's new brands always coming up and you know giving it a shot. But it, it's it's hard to do, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I know now that you know we have the experience level and the, um, you know, the, the already mature line that we can add to that's going to, there's no question we're going to succeed. It's kind of neat. I love how excited you are about it and about the future products. Like every time I talk to you, it's always about what we have coming and what we're working on. And you, you don't rest on what you've built, even though you've built a great company with a great reputation, but you're just constantly evolving it and so excited about the future of it. And so excited about this team that you've assembled of, of passionate guys that really love and care for the brand and want to do their very best. It's just yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I yeah love a bunch of them are getting it. tattoos, and I think somewhere there, there's probably some Everly Stock tattoos. I don't know. I've, or they're talking about actually for getting, you know, having a branding ceremony. I'm like, oh, dude. <laughs> Is this oh, Yellowstone? But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but anyway, but they're good. They're a good, solid team, and I really am proud of them. And, I, and really, like I said earlier, I want them to be, um, to know that they're the future of the company and the face of the company in yeah, the future. And, and, you know, I'm happy to just ride along with them. You um, have an amazing team, and... You know, my experience watching for the last was 16 years, something like that, I'm just watching, you know, the, the brand mm-hmm. uh, excel and the, the gear excel. And now you have the team behind it and you're building this company that's going to go to the next generation and in, in the next level. And it's awesome to watch. And I'm yeah. excited to see the apparel. I really am. Oh, good. It's going to be yeah. fun. Yeah, it's going to well, be fun. It is, yeah. And I'm excited, too. I, like Brian said, I'm, you know, it's sort of is contagious. I actually go, like, yeah, I can wake up with a little bit of spring in my step, step again. So it's <laughs> kind of cool. Yeah. Well, that's been fun. So uh, sorry about your dad. That, yeah. That's uh, too bad. You actually lost both your parents the last couple of years, yeah. right? Yeah, that's mom a year before dad. Yeah. yeah that's tough. That. I mean, you know, I guess that shows I'm getting to that age where that happens. And, and, uh, and yet 
Well, you said earlier, Ike, is uh, he, I came in here on, in, on crutches um, and, and talked <laughs> yeah. about the encounter with the was it guy in the NFL. Yeah, said, he was a he was a Dallas Cowboy uh, yeah. football player, and I was in the airport flying home from my knee surgery. For those that don't know, I had knee surgery this summer, and uh, guy comes in, he starts. Uh, we're exchanging knee stories and he's got shorts on. You can tell he's got two knee replacements. Yeah. And uh, as he walks away, he sits up and walks, hobbles away. And he goes, just remember us alpha males. We don't age well. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, my wife was rolling on the ground, laughing her butt off at that. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think that's, that's, that's good wisdom, good, a bit of wisdom to carry forward. Cause I'm to that age where I'm like, yeah, well, we'll see what happens. But with dad, you know, honestly, I, people go, Oh, it's tragic. And I go, yeah, it is. You know, he, he thought he was going to go to a hundred and we wished he would have. And I miss him. You know, the mm-hmm. weird thing is that when you lose a parent to, that you're, that you love, um, yep. you think about calling them all. Oh, I'm going to call dad and almost, Oh yeah. Uh, you know, he's not there. Uh, or he's, he's there. <laughs> yeah. But, um, he already knows. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But, um, I do miss him on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, you know, he died in a house fire, horrible way to die. I guess. I, so but I it, never asked. Yeah. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, his house burned down on him. And and but he was right in the thick of it, right at the show center, you know, at ground zero, and I'm sure trying to put the darn darn, darn thing out. Oh and I think gosh. about that and I go, Good on you, you know, an old marine. When I'm fighting. Yeah. You know, yeah. I you know, that's a lot better way than a lot of ways that an yeah. old marine could go. And, yeah. and and I think about him. He was eighty six years old and and uh, you know, determined to do his thing you know he had that like that focus like you know oh, yeah. locked in the mission in which you know which i've done like, a whole bunch of stupid stuff when i'm locked in the mission so um my first impulse is usually not the right one and it's, you know sometimes i go oops shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway with dad you know you go okay well good on you you know it's 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 too bad it's sad and we came in an untimely way that just because we didn't expect it on the one right. hand on the other hand when i found out the whole thing and what had happened i went oh okay you know i philosophically i can accept it and yeah uh and now we move on yep. yeah, and, and try to you know uh live well in ways that they would approve yeah and push his legacy i mean you guys you have done that really well and i've met all of your family and your brothers and sisters or brother and sister are amazing people and your parents have you know we are a product of our parents right Right. And he did a wonderful job with you guys. And you weren't it, perfect. You know, we, we, no, we I, no one's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no one's perfect. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, anyway. but, but yeah, yeah, it was fun to watch. You're, the, yeah. One of the funnest stories I remember of your dad is going to the out there event and he comes down on his four wheeler, gets off his four wheeler and crawls into the tractor and he's going to go mow something. And you come over like, dad, 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 we got this. We got this. He's 80. What is that? He's like 81 or 82. No, it was mowing the pasture. Five, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mowing the pasture. Yeah. yeah. Like, Good Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I hope I have that much, you know, piss and vinegar in me when I'm that age. Yeah. Yeah. Last year, I mean, he'd, he'd go up to the ranch by himself and, you know, it's remote, you yeah. know, and I'd be like, okay, dad, you know, tell us when you're coming out. Cause there's only so much heart medicine and whatever you got with you and right. usually not the right stuff and not the right amount. And so, you know, he'd say, okay, I'll, you know, I'll call you by Tuesday and by Friday I'd be like, oh shoot, you know, got to go find out if dad's <laughs> alive or not, you know, and doing another rescue mission. So four times last year, I, I, I really? went in there looking for him and fully expecting every single time to find him dead. Yeah. You know, I hate to say it, but, yeah. but it's uh, we're at that point where you go, well, I don't know, you know, if, if we haven't heard from him, well, every time he'd be like, oh God, you don't have to worry about me. Or, I mean, one time I go in there and, you know, I fly over the ranch and I, and I, uh, there's no smoke coming out of the chimney, and and I, you know, I go down and fly over the trailhead, and I see his truck, and I'm like, okay, well, he's still here, you know. Yeah. Go land the plane, uh, and uh, with my girlfriend Jennifer, and and we get out, and we just both have this feeling of dread, like, oh gosh, you know, yeah. this is tough. And yeah. uh, um, and she goes, well, you know, maybe he just left, and uh, he's between here and the trailhead, and and. I guess if the refrigerator's still cold, then we'll know that he just left. And so I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. You yeah. know, I, I love it because she often thinks of things that I, you know, oh, cool. So we went in to, you know, unlock the place, and it was all locked up and go in there. And sure enough, the refrigerator's still cold. I'm like, oh, wow, cool. So uh, so we go out and start getting ready to muster up and go out the trail to see where he is out there. And the right then he comes out of the woods on his four-wheeler. He's like, oh, you guys don't need to worry about me. <laughs> <laughs> so another time I go out there, and this time by road because I couldn't fly for whatever reason at that time. And. And I'm and I'm going to the ranch and uh, and along the way I find his bicycle and I'm like oh god you know Uh-oh. I'm picturing these jackass dogs that he's got running up the hill and he's going off after him and I'm like oh this is bad you yeah. know so you know well 
the middle of nowhere and you know woods all around and a bicycle there what do you do go looking or it's or almost you dark continue yeah so i go into the ranch and as i get to the ranch i hear dogs barking and then i'm like you know the next bit of tread oh gosh you know and so yeah you know i go up there no lights on in the place and it's getting dark i'm like and i hear the dogs barking like crazy and so i'm like i'm why, why would the dogs be in there well sure enough dad opens the door like they're oh you don't need to worry about me <laughs> <laughs> okay good to know <laughs> you're still alive what's up so, with the bike oh, broke yeah. A chain. <laughs> no yeah he's like oh like, you know, no it was more like I mean, he was always like, oh, I'm kind of dizzy. I'm not feeling good. And, you know, that's part of the whole story is that oh, you know, his health wasn't great as he was getting older. And he'd had heart trouble since he was my age, which, again, is sort of the thing. I'm like, okay, knock on wood. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, so he made it a lot longer than all probably said he should. And, and all the way along, the whole point of telling the stories is that it's kind of cool to just know, you know, he lived hard and well to the end. Yep. And, and, uh, and it's kind of fun. Um, Those are real men in that generation. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah they're for tough. Sure. My, my grandpa just turned 90, and uh, him and my grandma drove from Washington out to Montana for the 4th of July. They still they live drove. on their own. Yeah, I shared a beer with my grandpa, uh, you know, and he's 90, right you know. Right and right be on. able to talk about the, 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 the olden days and the times and Pacific Northwest and fishing for salmon and steelhead and the mm-hmm. blacktails and Roosevelt's. And then, you know, he'll tell uh, stories of, of his dad, Grandpa Dell, and how he'd uh, killed a black tail on the, he used to weld in the train cars in there. And, and actually that's how he passes, breathing all that stuff, oh, welding geez. in the train cars. But oh, wow. he talks about him killing black tails as they'd go by with a rock out of the train car. That he'd <laughs> hit black tails. And of course it was way different in that day and age, you know, it was for me yeah. to feed the family yeah. or whatever. Uh, but uh, so fun to, to listen to that guy and, and to hear him. And, 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 you know, they're just tough. He doesn't have any anxiety about his health or he's not worried about it. He, he's just, there for the moment living it and right. he gets up and he's a little bit dizzy at, at altitude and things and i've got to grab on he's oh, i'm fine i'm not going anywhere you know yeah. he's, he's just uh he, he's still living and enjoying it and i think you know it's a good lesson for all of us it's like it we get one chance at this thing you right. know we better try to live it to the fullest and enjoy it as much as we can and and uh, just like we started the converse conversation is not you know living in the present and yep. not worrying about everything around us or all the things we can't control you know we better enjoy enjoy it while we're here and one of the most important things is is family just enjoying our family right. and and enjoying the people around us family and friends like that's what's meaningful in life yeah, I've, never, you know? I've never heard of anybody on their deathbed go gosh i wish i would have worked more yeah, yeah. right 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 isn't that yeah. the truth yeah. Yep, it's yeah. enjoy the things we like to do and, and um, you know, work is necessary. But the good thing is, is we all enjoy what we do. And when yep. you enjoy what you do, it's not work anymore, you yep, know. Too. But but uh, it, it is, we also have to take those adventures and take those leaps like the like the beaver and going on those adventures. And we, uh, for me, my backcountry hunting, like, um, you know, I, I feel like I'm so drawn to it. And it is time away from my family, but they understand that it, that it resets things. And when I get out there and have these adventures i'm able to reflect better upon my life and reflect better upon my relationships you know with my my wife or with my kids or whatever the situation is and i'm able to come back and reset and be better like i notice if i'm in a in a bad mood or if i'm stressed out i may be uh, short-tempered and, and i'm i'm just um it's hard you can't just think about it and snap yourself out of it it almost yeah. takes like this change of perspective, like getting away from it to right. be able to change. Yeah, but I think good. it's so important in yeah. today's day and age. And um, I think the older we get, hopefully the better we get at it, you know? Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Definitely. No, that, what you were just saying reminded me of where we are, that Total Arch- Archery Challenge is going on. And then, of course, the Rocky Mountain you know, Up Nation Mountain Festival going on. And all that's cool. And But right here next door is Mountain Rifle Coffee. Yeah. And, and they're, they've been heavily involved in this uh, event today. And one of the organizations that they uh, partnered with recently, um, I can't remember the name of the archery challenge that they're doing, the uh, mission. Oh, it's, it's for the, the adaptive archery guys. Yeah, know, gosh, for, yep. Black Rifle Coffee does so much for the veterans, yeah. don't they? Yeah. What a great company. Yeah. We were so, there a couple nights ago, and I really like those guys. Oh, yeah, good dudes. Yeah, but but the conversation we were just having reminded me of a conversation I had last night with these adaptive uh, athletes or, or these uh, uh, veterans that have, you know, blown up and don't have right. legs or whatever right that are, they've gotten into archery and and they were talking about how archery resets them at what you're just saying you know it gets them up, they, they've recognized that it, it's a mechanism to get out and and get your brain in a different place and they're talking about no longer no longer need, needing meds you know yeah. because because they're because they're kind of it was a really cool uh, set of conversations and and it makes you realize okay we're in a really neat community and have a really cool way to connect with people 
that, I, that matters for their lives. I had a conversation yeah. um, last night or two, two yesterday with a guy that had uh, he was having epileptic seizures and he was on all kinds of medicine, couldn't figure it out. You know, they, they were trying to struggle with it, and he and he just accidentally somebody introduced him to archery. And he started shooting his bow, and he quit. Notice he quit having these seizures. Wow. So he has this doctor hook him up to, you know, so they can watch his brain activity, and he starts shooting. And she points out, and, and this is not a lie, mm -hmm. she points out on, on this um, form, she said, see those yellow dots? Yeah. Your mind, your brain is actually uh, healing itself when that happens. So whatever that is, keep doing it. Huh. And he's, this was six months ago and now he's almost completely off his med hasn't had a seizure in three months i mean he's completely crazy yeah. just by shooting a bow mm -hmm. yeah he's that great and he's he's also yeah. been shooting it with his kid he yes. went through oh, a divorce i was standing yeah, there for the conversation yeah, yeah. and, and so yeah he went through a divorce and and it's uh, you know, they split and then he gets the kid every so often and the kid was saying how he was missing something. They started shooting together and they built this great bond around it as well. And there, there's something about being, uh, 100% engaged in the task at hand. Right. It, it really gets your brain thinking about that and not anything else, but yeah, what an amazing study and what an amazing story. Amazing guy. He was so, uh, interested and engaged in, in learning about, uh, uh, bow hunting and yeah. the opportunities and wanting to do more of it yeah. and you could just see this this fire lit underneath yeah. him it was just amazing to talk to and then it bring his son together and he's healing yep. i mean it's just it's, yeah you're absolutely right glenn this yeah. is an amazing group of people uh, black rifles doing wonderful things with with our with our military vets and and uh, this event i talked to a guy at lunch he has both you know from knees down and he did the event today coming off that thing with prosthetics. And I was yeah, like, oh, my impressive. gosh. Of course, he comes up. I got a knee brace on. He comes <laughs> up. Oh, what happened? And I was like, how did you do that? He goes, ah, I'm pretty sore. Yeah. I said, do you get blisters? He goes, yeah, pretty bad blisters. I never even thought of stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, right, I can't right. imagine. You, you want to talk about mental toughness. Oh, yeah. That guy's got gosh. it in spades far more than yeah. we'll oh, ever know yeah, about, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, he's transcended a, a grave issue, and he's just yes. facing life and doing it. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's really cool. Man, so you you were uh, you did go elk hunting last year. Yep, and you did kill an elk. Yeah, well, yeah. I I didn't see the shot when I was watching it, talking to your crew. I could see it across the way they had it playing on the big screen. Right. So I didn't. I missed the shot. So right. tell us. Well, so so the funny thing is first about the film itself. The Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation yeah. uh, invited me on a hunt, and those are always the best ones because honestly, the, my problem is I'm super busy always, and and, and irrespective of Everly Stock, my life is just full and and so uh, i find myself showing up here going gosh i wish i shot my bow and sometime in recent memory so i can go up on the mountain with it because i don't want to do it right now because i've just embarrassed myself I don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't even know where my arrows are you know that's just my life yeah. and so you know it'll be the same way in the fall you know now i have a different sort of set of resources with the ranch my focus is different and i will hunt a lot more and hunt out of there i think but or because it's it's not hunting out of a ranch it's hunting out of a place in the middle of nowhere right you know that's yeah. gonna be fun yeah but last year the elk foundation invited me on it on a one of their hunts and you know they they want to tell story when they do that because they they make films that are actually excellent it turns out i didn't know i mean i, <laughs> I, I think it's watch an awesome them. story but yeah so um and and it was interesting because when you when you decide to tell a story there are lots of them to tell you know we could sit here and tell stories all day and you go well what's the you know what's the point of this um and and the way though that came together was good. I mean, it was rifle hunting. You go, okay, wasn't well, a bonus rifle? That's fine. I, I don't care. Yeah. I mean, as long as I is is, it, is I kill an animal, and he dies honorably. I don't really particularly right. care what the tool is. Um, but it, that's the that's the premise with which you engage. Oh, okay, it's rifle hunt. And it was late season in Montana, and um, uh, we went over there with the idea that we would tell a story about what happens when I go into the field with a with a cameraman. And I was like, well, the first problem there is I don't go into the field with a cameraman. <laughs> but if, you, if I must, I guess. But, but then uh, it turned out they did a really good job of telling the story. It's a nice film. And, and in it, um, when they asked me that question, well, you know, I said, well, you know, the truth is um, for years, Everly Stock was just me. And I wasn't that good at telling my own story and, and certainly not good at filming myself and don't particularly want to be filmed. But, um, but right now we're engaged in a process in a project of t 
telling our story, right. telling people about the innovations that we that that are all around us now that everybody uses the, that came from us and most of them out of my head. I, yeah, I, you know, so we'll say it. So Absolutely. anyway, the, the film actually did a good job of that. And but the interesting thing about it was that pretty authentically, it turned into a pretty difficult hunt. I mean, uh, you know, you think, okay, you know, Elk Foundation, you know, you're going to probably go shoot some elk that have been eating alfalfa nearby. It's fairly predictable, right? And we're like, <laughs> well, the rifle, you know, how could this be hard? So. <laughs> <laughs> Says everybody um, that's never hunted. <laughs> right? Yeah, I know, and I know better. Uh, so we got over into Montana, you know, south of Great Falls, where the Missouri enters the mountains, and neat, neat country. And uh, and we're talking to these ranchers on the way into wherever camp is. I didn't even know. And uh, these guys say, "Oh yeah, they start going to snow two feet tonight." And I was like, ah, two feet? Yeah, right." <laughs> in the morning, there was three feet of snow on the ground. Oh, oh, and, wow. Yeah, and it was it's like a the, blessing and a curse. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it was late October, early November, whenever it was. The ground still wasn't frozen, so it turned out though it snowed the, on that was opening day. It snowed all day. We couldn't even get out the door on opening day, and and had and were it not for the fact that the ground was warm underneath and the snow is basically melting as right. it's falling, um, still. On day two of the hunt, we woke up to, you know, knee deep and, all, and in some places hip, hip deep snow. Jeez. Um, you know, so the equivalent of five feet had probably fallen with, with three to four feet on the ground or yeah. two feet in some places. And it's but, nice and heavy because it's one of the Well, first. it was still light, was but it? then it turned into heavy because it's melting from below. So, right. so at first you think, oh, yeah, we can wade through this. And we had a great guide, this guy Mark, you know, and, uh, and, and, uh, and he, you know, suddenly, though, this hunt went from being fairly predictable where they know, you know, what the elk typically do at this time of year to gosh knows, you know, they've gone all over the country. Yeah. And so we saw a lot of elk, but they're often in the distance, you know, out mm -hmm. yonder. And, um, and it turned out to be a really difficult hunt just because the elk we saw, we couldn't hunt because they weren't in our arena. And right. so when we did finally see one, you know, we went after him and, and fortunately he was fairly stationary or static and still there when we got there. And so that was the only opportunity that, wow. that, that we got on the hunt. Wow. Um, and he was a nice, big old, you know, gnarly bull. He started the season as a seven by six and ended up as a five point because everything was broken off. Oh, know? geez. <laughs> but but kind of cool. That's okay. You, know? you just you leave it. Yeah. That's, he's an old battler. And yeah, he's, he's a still giant, a giant yeah. bull and, yeah. and just a really cool beast. Yeah. And, and it was a cool hunt because we earned it. I mean, And you we, were able to capitalize on it? Did you shoot oh, it yeah. with one of your rifles? Yeah. yeah That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, one of fun. your own stock designs? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. how cool. Yeah. It was yeah. fun. Where can yeah. we check out the video at? Well, the uh, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation's got it on their uh, website. Their platform, yeah, yeah. So the RMEF films, okay. and that, that, that film is called Beyond the Hunt. No, Beyond the Lens, I'm sorry. Beyond, Beyond the Lens. Oh, i got to <laughs> check it out. Is that a series, um, though? Because they well, they've done a couple of those, haven't they, Beyond the Lenses? I'm not sure. I mean, I, I, I honestly— I was thinking it was um, Beyond the Lens, Everly Stock, is what well, I was thinking. Th yeah, that, that was— yeah, Beyond the Lens, Everly Stock. Okay. Yeah. If you look for it, look for that. But, yeah. but honestly, I, I saw it for the first time today, and— when they sent it out last spring, I was like, oh, I can't watch. It's me. And, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, um, Don't worry, guys. Make I, sure I, I not, don't look completely I went stupid. Never, and then Deck, Decker sent me a note. Steve Decker from the Elk Foundation said something about how well it came out. And, oh, we should be proud. And I was like, really? Okay, I guess I'll have to watch it sometime. And, you know, months went by and I hadn't. And um, <laughs> I visited the Elk Foundation in March. No, I'm sorry. Sometime in the spring, I don't know when. Um, and, and we had a, you know, it was in March, yeah. We had a really nice visit with them because they, we have a great alliance with them and they yep. believe in us, we believe in them, and they, and we both have an eye towards the future where we can support each other and build, you know, yep. our brands in a good way where it's productive for both of us and particularly where we put, you know, money into their organization to open up more country. It's just yep. cool. You and know, they're a that's great a great success way to do it. story for yeah. conservation. So, so they're really our, our, you know, our key conservation partner and, good meeting with them and in the course of that meeting though i mentioned to decker that i'd never watched that film and he's looking at me like what the frick's wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> like, well, kind of shy <laughs> i don't really like at least seeing myself so anyway um <laughs> shaving's even hard for me I'm so <laughs> <laughs> i look at myself in the mirror anyway uh uh but today it happened to be on after i was sitting there having a conversation with him and on the arena film on the stage out there on the on the can on the thing and i was forced to watch it i know actually as it came on it was sort of compelling the intro and actually i, I irrespective of the fact that it's i'm in it um it was good it was good they did it's a good really job good. telling the story yeah. it was nice and, and it would, you know shows a success successful hunt but more important than that it, a little insight into me, I guess, and into our stories or company, and I thought that was good. And yeah. really, you know, appreciated the chance to, to tell it a bit of that again with them. Yeah, so. that was awesome.
Very cool. Yeah. And you got and you took home the elk and oh yeah, he eats and, good. Yeah. yeah, he's a yeah he's a yeah. It's funny because you one of my friends when I was talking about it, some guys go oh he's an old bull I just turned him into hamburger you know oh, I've, I've no. got a buddy who goes oh man he's you know he's killed a lot of elk and he goes no I've never killed an elk that doesn't eat well and yeah. and and the same you know this was a big old old you know it was one of those when you're watch, watching him through the glass across the valley you know you can just tell he's got a he's got a big body fat yep. big neck big shoulders walks yep. ponderously and yep. and you're not surprised when you get over there and you see his tracks are like the size of dinner plates you know and, <laughs> <laughs> and they um, build them book big there in the missouri breaks yeah Holy buckets right. those bulls are those bulls are at least three maybe two two three hundred pounds bigger than the bulls in southern colorado just really? body yeah. mass right, well yeah. they got live those winners yeah yeah, so he was the, one of those, and yeah. not the biggest rack. I don't care, you know. Yeah. It's a cool rack, and and again, I, I'm super happy to have gotten the chance to get him because it was, we and and also value the fact that we earned it. I mean, yeah. we, we I was talking about Mark, the guide earlier, and the first day out, we had this idea that we'd um, that we would because we had wheeled UTVs supposedly get us around this country, and we're thinking, ah, yeah, we'll just you know we'll go out and you know break two trails so that as the snow melts, we can use the UTV and get up where we need to go to get you know closer to where the animals are. So we walked seven miles through hip deep snow that day. <laughs> oh, um, wow. Yeah. Which is Trying like to, running a triathlon. Yeah. And we, initially with Mark in the front on one and, and there's four of us between cameramen so and tow hunters and, and we're, and we're cycling back, you know, and, but mostly Mark's just walking by himself over on this other side. And, uh, along the way, I look back and I notice that all the other guys are following him, not me. And I'm like, oh, hey, and they're like, Come on over. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the water's fine over here. Idea. <laughs> so, yeah. so that tough old dude ended up, all, you know, doing that, you know, breaking trail for us all day. And yeah, we walked seven miles through that stuff. That was something else. But um, but then by the end of the hunt, the snow had melted enough. We were still walking in the snow, but we could walk, you know, passively. It, it was a yeah. It was, but it was a really cool hunt as it turned out. And I I do love Montana, and the chance to go do that was really special. So great place to test people. some gear. Yeah, yeah, and we did. And, and honestly, part, part of the fun is in doing it, I thought, oh, you know, I'm going to use a J34 with the old Just One, the, yeah, the classic yeah. Everly stock pack. You yeah. know? So I had the gun stuck in that thing and had it closed up and went up and shot that big, big old bull. And you just relished the, you know, the moment of sliding one of those big hind quarters into that thing mm-hmm. and buckling it up yep. and putting the head on and buckling that down. And then, you know, it's somewhere along the way. I tried it both ways, antlers down and antlers up, you, you know, doing that stuff. And just fun, you know, just, yep. to, just to, to kind of to go back. It had been a long time actually since I used that pack. And that moment to do that that day was was pretty cool. Every time yeah. I put this T-shirt on, I, the, 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 the home crowd, I have the, the Dragonfly T-shirt on. And every time I put it on, I go, God, that was a good pack. Was such a great pack. <laughs> yeah, right. And I don't, you know, yeah. it was a good pack, but I think a lot of it has to do with the memories that I had with that pack. Yeah. You know, yeah. Right. You on. know, all yeah. those hunts and successful ones and unsuccessful ones. And when I did get quarters and when I came out empty, pun hungry, yeah. it's just fun. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. That's fun. Well, I, you know, and honestly, the fact that, um, I can have a background cameo role in that and, and have got gear that guys like you are using out there and appreciate it. Really, yeah. that's just such an honor. Yeah. That's really the way I look at it. It's, it's an honor. Mm-hmm. So that's fun. Super cool. Yep. Yeah. Ike, closing thoughts? I just appreciate your friendship, Glenn. It's been a long time. We've been friends and, and a partnership and the gear you're building, and I just can't wait to see the next steps. I just, yeah. I'm just i just ecstatic about yeah, that. Right so. On. Yeah, mm-hmm. thank you. I'll show you some yep. secrets. Glenn, <laughs> closing uh, thoughts? Uh, you guys, great to see you guys, and thank you so much I, for the invitation, the opportunity to sit down with you. I do appreciate it. It's, yeah. it's, Sorry it's I cool. sprung this on you. No, it's, it's, it's all right. I'll get you back later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I always really enjoy the conversation. I never know where it's going to go, but it's always interesting. So, yeah, I'm super excited for the future and uh, yeah. just so proud to be using your guys' gear and, and uh, really appreciate the relationship. So, well, yeah. Likewise, Mark. Thanks, Thanks. you guys. Thanks. Okay. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Yeah, just a a really authentic conversation. Uh, I love it when people forget that they have the headsets on and we just get talking back and forth. So uh, great conversation. Thanks to Glenn uh, for the podcast and also his support at Eastman's Elevated. We really appreciate it. Just been such a great partner at Eastman's, and I know uh, him and Ike are really good friends, and um, it, it always makes for a good podcast when you get two old friends on the on the podcast there. So, um, yeah, thanks to those guys. Thanks to Ike for um, uh, always supporting this podcast. Um, sure appreciate it. I sure enjoy doing it and sharing everything with you guys. Um, so uh, thanks to those guys. Thanks to Everly Stock for their support. And, uh, man... Um, I'm back at it here, so uh, heading on an elk hunt. Um, couldn't be more excited. 
Um, just going to go chase some big six points around and, and uh, got some good buddies. My my buddy uh, Sean Curran is flying in from Hawaii. I pick him up tonight, and then we leave tomorrow and go do a week um, chasing bulls. Looks like the weather's going to be pretty good, and um, hopefully they should be rutting and get into some good six points. So I uh, can't wait. Cut the legs loose here and get after it. So um, hopefully you guys are having some good adventures and, and uh, enjoying it and soaking it in seems like this fall season you wait all year for it and uh, then it comes and goes pretty quick you know so uh, we have to do our best to uh, enjoy it as much as we can so um, I'm definitely going to be doing that chasing some bulls I'll try to record a a live podcast and um, then we're also going to try to capture some video over there so um, yeah it'll be good Uh, it'll be a blast Uh, my buddy uh, Dan Heverin's going to meet us over there share camp he's got a tag as well and um, man Go kill some bulls. Go get some elk meat in the freezer. So um, hopefully that's how it goes down. But, uh, yeah, couldn't be more excited for the adventure. It's just going to be fun to to get after them and get after some bugling bulls. I um, I hunted uh, one weekend pretty slow for elk, uh, pretty few and far between there, um, hunting a new unit, and uh, just didn't pan out. But uh, that's the way it goes. Uh, when you're a public land hunter, you got to try spots out. you got to strike out here and there until you finally find that – that super party or you find that action and able to chase that six point. So hopefully here uh, throughout the next week, um, get some close encounters and some good action. I'm sure I will. So it'll be fun. Um, Thanks for the support of the podcast. I really appreciate it guys. And uh, with that, I'll check in with you next week.